Well, we're continuing the series, Sacred Calling. The truth that every one of us who believes in Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, is not only glad to be aware and living in the conscious awareness that we're forgiven, graced people, that there's no sin you and I have ever committed or ever would commit that would change the love of God for you. You are the child of God. You belong to your heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ. But as soon as faith clings to that truth, then the Holy Spirit begins to call you to a life of distinction because he's got a purpose for you in the journey. That's why Paul said in the book of Philippians that I might lay hold of that for which I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Many times, even though I'm your preacher, I'm content to just embrace the truth that I'm forgiven. Well, didn't do real good today, Lord, but thanks that you got me covered. And I hope I do better tomorrow. That's it. What if our vision expanded and you understood that Jesus Christ needs you to be his missionary on a daily basis in the world, that he's got a purpose for your life to use the uniqueness of your personality to pour his spirit in you and through you to touch life after life after life with his amazing grace so that they also know that we have a heavenly father who loves us and their faith is encouraged or comes alive. So we're called to be the missionaries of Jesus Christ. I just wanted to give you a little uh, collage image of the people God has used in history for mission work around the world for the sake of the gospel. William Carey, known as the father of modern missions, grew up in England but was a missionary to India, a skilled linguist, writer, printer. He translated huge portions of the Bible in many languages. Many of us, most of us know Mother Teresa, called to serve the poorest of the poor and attend to the dying in Calcutta, India. Most of her ministry, by the way, people said, why would you waste your time on people that are lying, dying in the street? And she always said it was because the compassion of God knows their name and God wants us to love them. Or... David Livingstone, who was a medical missionary from London Missionary Society, born in Scotland in 1813, but spent most of his life in the continent of Africa as an explorer and doctor. Or it's George Mueller, who was known as a prayer warrior, who started orphanages and preached about the need for missionaries all around the world. In his orphanage, he had a unique approach over the course of his lifetime he took care of and raised up 10,000 children but he operated with the firm conviction that he should never directly ask people for money he just went to his prayer closet and prayed that God would stir the hearts of people to give in support of the mission that God had called him to do Hudson Taylor 50 years a missionary to China He had a tremendous respect for Chinese culture. He became one who walked in the ways of Chinese culture, dressed like the people of that culture, believed that the gospel should come, but that the culture should not be uh, westernized in order to become like Englishmen or Americans. And he drew criticism for that, but Hudson Taylor was a tremendous doctor, physician, evangelist, also a translator of scripture, and many people in hearing Hudson Taylor speak felt God called them to mission work. Jonathan Goforth, think about that name. How's that for a missionary? Jonathan Goforth. But he and his wife went to China as traditional missionaries. Then eventually he decided he was more effective as an evangelist. So he traveled the whole continent of China and would share an appeal for Chinese men and women to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Amy Carmichael grew up in Ireland, but went to India 
lived there 56 years, never returned to her homeland, but she had a mission to care for orphans and children in the continent of India. Jim Elliott, probably one of the more well-known missionaries in Christian mission history, he went to serve, felt called to the Alka Indians in South America and was killed by a cannibalistic, hostile people. But one of his quotes as he was called to ministry was, that one is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Read that again. That one is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Maybe that's the heartbeat of missionaries. The last one I'll name to you is Eric Liddell, probably best known for that movie Chariots of Fire on the basis of principle. He refused to run on the Sabbath, on Sundays, and it affected his competing in the Olympics as a world-class runner. He later, though, having been raised in China by missionary parents, went back to their home country to compete as an Olympic runner, eventually was called back to China as a missionary. And here's an interesting thing. He died at a young age of disease, but the children that he taught as a missionary, later someone visited with them, they never knew that he was an Olympic runner. The only basis that he conveyed his personality and his message to them was that he loved Jesus and he wanted them to love Jesus too. So what's the big news in America this week? Who's the visitor? The Pope Francis. He is a missionary. And by the way, I think it's awesome. I think that a prominent Christian leader who comes to our country and the whole nation zeroes in and listens to his message. You know, when the tide comes in, all ships rise, right? I think it shows that our nation, our culture, our world is hungry for a message of hope. They want to find meaning. They want some conviction that would pacify their fears. And in the process of being in America, he canonized Juniper Serra, Franciscan friar, who brought the gospel to the, to the state of California in the pioneering days, later secured a bill of rights for the native people there. I suggest to you that Pope Francis and Juniper Serra, who was celebrated in that canonization for the Roman Catholic, were missionaries. Our mission, that Pope Francis is a missionary of sorts. But here's what I don't want you to leave the church without realizing. You might hear that laundry list of prominent, powerful individuals, women and men, who felt the call of God's Spirit. And the truth is, in every generation, in every period of time, in every place, God's Spirit, called by the gospel, will raise up people to share the message of the gospel for the word of God is going to continue to be shared to the whole world until Jesus Christ comes again. But I want you to know that you are called to be a missionary for Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't think about yourself that way. I want you to think of yourself that way. All missionaries share these things in common. A passionate desire to bless people in Jesus' name. A willingness to share the gospel, to share about the grace, the forgiveness, and love of the Creator God who made us, and that in the name of Jesus, we don't have to run and hide because God has, in the name of Jesus, invited us into a relationship to enjoy and walk in His love. And that all missionaries want to serve the needs of those with whom they live. Second, every missionary has kind of a pioneering spirit, the heart of an adventurer, an openness to the spirit that says, wherever you send me, Lord, I'll go. I'll do it for you because my life belongs to you. Third, they need to be entrepreneurs, creative and innovative in their ways to try to share that message of hope. Fourth, they need to be willing to sacrifice Live with self-denial. I love what C.S. Lewis once said. 
the well-known Christian writer, author. He had been an agnostic, you know, before he came to faith. Here's what he wrote. I didn't go to religion to make me happy. I always knew that a bottle of port would do that. If you want religion to make you comfortable, I certainly don't recommend Christianity. Now that's convicting for me. You know why? Because I want God to just kind of make me comfortable, take care of my problems, and leave me alone. Forgive my stuff, and then rid my problem of all challenge. Make me at ease. But the truth is, in the same way that God sent his only son, Jesus, to be a missionary to the world, he needs you. He needs you to use the uniqueness of your personality and your gifts and your energy and your voice to bless people in his name. So, a whole variety of ways to be a missionary. You might be a teacher. You might be an evangelist. You might be a medical doctor, an agricultural consultant, a health expert. You might be a construction worker. You might be involved in systemically improving the conditions of primitive con- situations in the world. But all of it serves as a backdrop, a doorway to ultimately share the message that because there's a God, there's reason to not give up hope. That there's a God who loves us all and gives us life. So Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. How many of you are actively involved in farming still today? Okay, it looks like harvest time to this preacher, does it? The crop looks like it's ready to come in, right? So do you sit by the hour in the coffee shop and while away the time when it's harvest? No. You crank up that combine, right? You hit the field. You bring it in because we're under a sense of urgency. The crop is ready. It's got to come in. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. So what's the need in the world? Let me click some off to you. These are big picture stuff. Is not the world at war? Internationally, isn't that true? Or... Poverty systemically causing problems all over. People still starve to death. People who have prevailing illnesses to which they need inoculation or cure. Homelessness, refugees. And I understand, by the way, the fear of seeing those hundreds of thousands of refugees from the country of Syria and no place to go. And the profound images of of children washing up on the beach who got uh, thrown out of the boat. If that image doesn't stir your heart, you better take your pulse. But Jesus says that we're to take in the refugees. Find a way! You're afraid of ISIS? Find a way! Bring them in! Because we're supposed to take care of the homeless. Human trafficking is a problem that is amazing to me because it's a form of 21st century slavery and it increases as a problem. Racism, injustice, oppression, drug addiction, brokenness. Everywhere we look, the world seems broken beyond repair. And the world pursues materialism and wealth and uh, pleasure as a way to hold at bay their hopelessness, and their fears. Who's got the message that can transform the perspective and the philosophy of the world toward what's going on? We who know and believe that Jesus is Lord. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And Jesus needs you to be a missionary for the gospel. So Paul in the book of Romans says that because he's a slave of Jesus Christ, that's a word that describes the purchase price of the blood of Jesus that made Paul his own. He says, because I'm a slave of Jesus, a servant of Jesus, then I'm an apostle, I'm sent out. And I say the same to you. 
You understand that God made you. You understand that Jesus has forgiven your sin. You and I believe and confess that the Holy Spirit lives within us. Now I need you to know and believe that in the distinctiveness of who you are as a person, that Jesus Christ, empowering you and giving you the authority of his Holy Spirit, says, go live in my name every day. It's not just those preeminent missionaries through the years who went to foreign lands. You're called to be a missionary for Jesus Christ. So we are sent by Jesus Christ, sent under his authority, sent with his message on his mission. You remember hearing this quote by Francis of Assisi? Everywhere you go, preach the gospel. And if it's necessary, use words. Have you heard that? Everywhere you go, preach the gospel. And if you have to, if you really have to, speak the word. You and I are incarnational, just like Jesus came to our world and took on a physical body in order to redeem us. We're to be embodying the love and presence of Jesus Christ to the world. So I ask you, do you think of yourself as a missionary for Christ? Maybe you've heard this quote, you're either a missionary or a mission field. What does that mean? You think about it. Either the presence of Jesus is within you and you are his missionary or faith is not there and you do not have Jesus' spirit within you and you are one to whom the light has to dispel the darkness. You're either a missionary or a mission mission field. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, said it this way, Every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. Now here's a chance for personal confession. I am called and professionally I am a pastor. You pay me to be good. You're good for... No, no, no. no. (laughs) But you and I are alike in that we're called to bring the presence of Jesus Christ wherever we go. Mother Teresa said, not all of us can do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. So let's talk about the specifics of those who were sent for a minute. It says, ask for the Lord. Ask for the Lord to send laborers into the harvest. Here's what I want to say. First we pray. I ask you to pray for Faith Lutheran, that Faith Lutheran would envision a way for us as a congregation to be a powerful missionary agent. Not a secret agent, right, Andrea, Austin? But a special agent for the gospel. So pray for your family, pray for your spouse, pray for your children. But pray for the people in the circles in which your natural rhythms of life rub shoulders pray for people that are difficult for you to love pray for where you believe the gospel would take you pray about that pray for opportunity to show the love of jesus to someone else but first you pray First, you ask God's Spirit to prepare the way and to go before you so that as you come to work, that God has already been there at work in the hearts of those people. Second, trust God's provision. It says an unusual thing in the Gospels. It says, take nothing for your journey. How many of you go on vacation but don't pack a suitcase? How many of you would travel to China and not take any money with you. But Jesus said, go in my name, seek to do my mission, and don't even take anything for the journey. That means that in order to be a missionary for Christ, I have to have this intrinsic, continual, total dependence upon Jesus Christ to do the mission. Third, don't go alone. He sent them out two by two. You're not intended to journey alone. We talked about that last week. Fourth, 
Begin by establishing a relationship. Befriend those people. Regardless of who they are, what they do in life, what their socioeconomic status is, regardless of whether they share your faith or don't share your faith, befriend them. Love them. Be compassionate to them with no agenda except to show them love. Then fifth, and this is a big, broad category, but I would say Jesus will use you to reverse the effects of the fall. So when it talks about healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, standing against darkness, It's God saying, in your life, in the name and authority of Jesus, I want to use your life to reverse the effects of the fall. You've got to have the courage to actually lay hands on someone and ask Jesus to heal them. But don't doubt that you have the authority to go ahead and pray for that. You have the authority in the story of your own life to talk about the difference that Jesus Christ has made to your perception of what your life is for. But don't ever doubt that Jesus wants to use your life to his glory. God wants to use your life to reverse the effects of the fall which bring brokenness to this world. And by the way, if you pray for someone's physical healing and you do not immediately perceive the healing, here's what I want you to think about. When faith comes alive in an individual's life and they are in in Christ, they are reconciled to God through Christ, they are already eternally healed because after death, all people will be healed. So our, our responsibility is to pray for Jesus' spirit to anoint them with grace. I don't have to take control or responsibility for the results. I'm just called to pray that Jesus' grace heal their lives in every way that they need the brokenness of their heart to be reversed. God wants you to do that. It's an interesting phrase, isn't it? Shake off the dust from your feet. Instead of kind of leaving the town with an attitude, here's what I'd like you to think about. There's a parameter of responsibility that we have. There's a part that is God's to do, and there's a part that is ours to do. I don't heal people. I just ask Jesus to heal them. I share the message. I pray for them. I speak peace to them. If they reject the message and reject me, it isn't me they're rejecting. It's Jesus himself. So when he says, shake off the dust, I think it's a way to say, Unbelief was strong here, but God will have to take care of that. And I don't have to feel responsible for it. I have done what Jesus has asked me to do. Everywhere you go, say, the kingdom of heaven is near. Their opportunity has been there. You again, I want to say it again. You, by bearing the spirit of Jesus, bring the spirit of Jesus everywhere you go. Rejoice that in Christ's name, you have that authority. Ultimately, Jesus says, rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So here's what I want you to dream with me about, Faith Lutheran. What is Faith Lutheran's mission? It's awesome that Jesus always draws us to his heart, pours his grace into us, whispers his love, and says, you belong to me. Never forget it. And I revel in that message. I am unconditionally loved by my Father in heaven in the name of Jesus who inhabits my life with his Holy Spirit. But you and I, as the people of faith, are called to be missionaries beyond these doors. And we got to figure out what God is calling us to do to be servants beyond these doors. How can we? be missionaries for Christ. So I think about a year ago, I asked this question in a message. If tomorrow, for some reason, Faith Lutheran ceased to exist, would the community of Spencer miss us? Think about that. If tomorrow Faith Lutheran ceased to exist, 
would the community of Spencer lament the fact that we're no longer here to bless and serve them? If the answer is no, they wouldn't miss you. Just kind of shrug the shoulders. Then I have to ask as your leader, how come we're not engaging in tangible ways things that are such a blessing to this town that they say, I thank God for Faith Lutheran. I thank God for what they do to our town, to our area. They are such a blessing. We have to be missional as God's people. Now we have a fantastic missions ministry team. Raise your hand if you're on the missions ministry team. Hold them high and proud. Come on. I am grateful for your work. You can see on that back billboard all the people that we have engaged as mission partners. That's one way for us to do mission is to collaborate with other Christian agencies that are already fully engaged in sharing the gospel. The other way is to go yourself. And I won't limit God. Maybe God is calling you individually to go somewhere to serve him. The third way is to give of your means and your money to empower the kingdom of God to be built around the world. I close with this story. Bill Nitzel was telling me a few days ago that when Heather Symington, who is a missionary to Europe, is it Spain? Burma. She was called by God to go to Burma to work specifically with human trafficking. She was back on furlough presenting about her mission cause to a group here in northwest Iowa. And at the end of her talk, in a Q&A period, somebody asked her, why do you have to go around the world when there's so much mission work to be done right here? Do you know what she said? She said, of course there's work to do right here. I can only say that the Spirit of God has called me to where I'm going. I'm called to go there. And then she said this, but it sounds like God's Spirit is calling you to do work right here. You're a missionary for Jesus Christ. I want you, therefore, this week to pray to the Lord to show you specific people that you're going to target with your love so that they will get to know you as friend and so that you can share your love for Christ with them. Because you're a missionary of Jesus Christ. Amen.